Welcome to Wiki Smash Studio's tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a trigger box on our sword to determine once an enemy has been hit. This is the final part of a two video series. In the previous video, we covered using sockets and animations to create a sword slice movement. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So before we get into the trigger box for our sword, we're going to create a stand-in enemy so that way we can see that it's actually doing damage. So I'm going to create a new C++ class. It's just going to be an actor and I'm just going to name it enemy. So we're going to go ahead and create this class. And now that this class is created, the first thing we need to do is add two includes. The first one is actually going to be for a mesh component, so we're going to do include components static mesh component dot h, and this is going to allow us to add a mesh to our enemy so that we can visualize it in the scene. And the other include is going to be engine dot h. And the only reason I'm including engine.h is so that way I can debug to the screen the health as the damage is done, so that way you can see that the trigger box is working. So now that we have that, I'm going to go down to our public section and I'm going to add a new function. It's going to be void take damage. And this function is actually going to be called inside of our trigger box. So that way, whenever the sword overlaps with the enemy, we can call the damage function then. And then we need two properties. So we're going to do u property. And the first one is going to be an integer for our health. And this will just be so that we can keep track of how much damage has been done and so we know when the enemy is dead and the other property is going to be for our mesh so we're going to do u property and this one we want to be visible anywhere and the reason we're doing visible anywhere is so that way we can select the mesh inside the details panel and then we're also going to give it a category and we'll just make the category equal to mesh and the category allows you to organize your details panel so that way you can find things easier. And this property is going to be a pointer to class use static mesh component. And we'll just call it mesh. And now we're done with the header, so we can go ahead and open our CPP. And the first thing we want to do inside of here is go ahead and set some defaults inside our constructor. The first one is going to be health. I'm going to make it equal to 100. But this value can be whatever you feel best fits your game. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the mesh. So we're going to do mesh equals create default sub object. And it's going to be of type u static mesh component. And for the text, we'll do text mesh. And then we want this mesh to be at the root of our object. And so the way we do that is through root component and we make it equal to the mesh. And now we can go ahead and create our take damage function. So we're going to do void a enemy take damage. And anytime this function is called, I want 10 damage to be done to the enemy. So I'm going to do health minus equals 10 and from there i want to be checking whenever the enemy has run out of health and so to do that we're going to do if health is less than or equal to zero then we want to go ahead and deactivate the object in the scene as well as getting rid of its collision and so to do that we're going to do this set actor hidden in game to true and so this will make it to where we can no longer see our object in the scene. But on top of that, we want to make sure that our collision is no longer active. So we're going to do this, set actor enable collision to false. And this makes it to where our sword will no longer call the take damage function whenever it overlaps with this object. And now that we've handled the damage being done and handled what happens once the enemy runs out of health, we're going to go ahead and debug onto the screen the health. And this is just so that you can see that it's actually deducting health. And now we're going to add a debug message. So we're going to do g engine add on screen debug message. And then we're going to give it a negative one in the key. We'll give it two seconds for how long it appears. We're going to give it a f color of red. 
and then we want to debug how much health there is but since that's an integer we need to do f string from int and then we'll give it health and again, this debug line is solely so that way you can see the damage being done with each slice. And now that we're done with this, we can go ahead and create our sword trigger box. So we need to go back to the scene, create C++ class. You have to go to show all classes, and then we'll look for trigger box. I'm gonna call this one sword, and we'll create class. And the first thing we want to do inside our sword.h is add an include, and this include is going to be for our enemy.h. And again, we're using the trigger box to call the take damage function of our enemy, so we need to reference that script from this one. And then as you can see, the script is fairly empty by default, unlike the actor script, and so we need to add some of those basics that are defaulted into the actor script. So we'll go ahead and add protected, and inside this we want our virtual void begin play override and then we want to create a public section and inside here we need our constructor and now we can go ahead and create our function for attacking so this is going to be a u function and then we're going to call it void attack this function is going to be added to the dynamics of our on actor overlap, and so we need to have two specific arguments in order for it to properly function. And so the first one is a pointer to class A actor, and it's going to be called overlapped actor. And the second one is also a pointer to class A actor, but this one will be called other actor. And again, just to reiterate, the function can be called whatever you'd like, it does not have to be attack. However, you need these two arguments inside your function, otherwise the add dynamic function that we're going to use in the CPP will not work. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and add our U property, which will be a boolean, and we're going to call it attacking. We'll be using this boolean to determine if our player is currently slicing, so that way if our player is running around with their sword out but isn't attacking, if they bump into an enemy, it doesn't still do damage. And that's all we're going to be doing inside the header, so we can go ahead and open up the CPP. And as you can see, just like with the header, it's a little empty inside the trigger box, so we need to go ahead and add those things that are defaulted into the actor class for us. So the first one is the constructor, so we're going to have a sword, a sword, We'll go ahead and fill this out. So the first thing we want to do is add a dynamic to on actor begin overlap, which will just say when we overlap with an actor, call this function. And so that's on actor begin overlap, add dynamic, and we want to add the dynamic to this, our trigger box. And the dynamic that we want to add is our attack function, so we're going to do a sword attack. And again, if you did the properties incorrectly, your add dynamic may be underlined because it's unable to take a function that doesn't have those two arguments inside of its parameters. And all this line is saying is whenever a trigger box starts to overlap with an actor, call the attack function. Now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and give a default to our attacking boolean, which is just going to be false, because obviously the scene doesn't start with us attacking our enemy. And now we want to go ahead and add begin play, so we're going to do void a sword begin play. And we're not going to be adding anything special into this, we just want to use the super of begin play. So that's all we'll be doing there. Again, begin play is normally defaulted into the script, such as with actor, but it is not for your trigger box. And now finally, we can go ahead and add our function. So we're gonna do void a sword attack, and then you need to make sure that you put those two arguments. So class a actor overlapped actor and class a actor, other actor. And the first thing I want to do when this function is called is make sure that other actor exists, so that way we don't get any null errors. So we're going to do if other actor, 
And then we also want to make sure that other actor is not this. In other words, we're making sure that we're not trying to attack itself. So other actor does not equal this. And if both of those instances are true, then we can go ahead and check to see if the other actor is in fact an enemy. And the way we do that is by attempting to cast the other actor as an enemy. So we're going to create a pointer to a enemy and we'll call it enemy. And then we need to do cast of type enemy. And the thing we're attempting to cast is other actor. So again, what this line is doing is saying to attempt to cast other actor as an A enemy, and if it successfully casts, then go ahead and set other actor as the enemy pointer. And so the way we're going to determine if this successfully cast is by checking if enemy is not null. And on top of that, we want to make sure that attacking is true. Again, we're going to be using this attacking boolean to determine if we're currently slicing or not. So if enemy successfully casted and we are currently attacking, then we want to go ahead and have the enemy take damage. And that's all we're going to be doing for the trigger box of our sword. So what we're actually going to do next is go to the my character script that we worked on in the previous video. And the first thing we're going to want to do is add an include. And this include is so that way we can access our sword. So we're going to do sword.h. And the reason we need to access our sword is so we can tell it whether we're currently attacking, in other words, the slice animation is playing or not. And so the only other thing we need to do inside the header is add a property. So it's going to be a U property. It's going to be edit anywhere, which will allow us to assign it inside of our details panel. And we're going to give it a category of animation. So that way it'll be in the same section of our details panel as the properties from our previous video. And this is going to be a pointer to a sword. And we're going to call it sword box. And now we can go over to the CPP of my character. And the first thing we need to do is determine when attacking is true. In other words, the animation is playing. And the way we're going to do that is in our attack function. So if we're here, we're saying that we're currently attacking, the animation of slice is playing. So what we want to do is go ahead and set our sword boxes attacking to true as well. So we're going to make sure first that our sword box is in null so we don't get any errors. And then we want to do sword box attacking equals true. And again, this will let the trigger box of our sword know that if you have interacted with an enemy, go ahead and call that take damage function. Now we need to be able to determine when the animation has stopped playing. And so the way we're going to do that is inside of tick. Tick is called every frame. So what we want to do inside of here is say, has our animation already been playing? So we're going to do if, and we're actually going to do sword box first. So that way we know it's not null. And then we're going to do sword box attacking. In other words, the animation has been playing. And then if both of those instances are true, we want to check to see if the animation is still playing. And the way we'll do that is by getting our mesh and checking is playing. And if we're going to be turning attacking to false, then we want to make sure that it's no longer playing. So we're going to be checking if this is equal to false. And then if it is no longer playing, then we can go ahead and take our sword box and it's attacking property and setting it to false as well. So again, what we're doing inside the tick function is making sure that our sword box isn't null, seeing if attacking is currently true. In other words, the animation has previously been played. And then if it has previously been played, we want to check if it's no longer playing. And if it's no longer playing, then we want to go ahead and say we're no longer attacking. And that's all of the coding that we're going to be doing for this tutorial. So we can go ahead and go back to the scene and compile. Now that we've completed our compile, we can go ahead and drag our enemy into the scene. I'm going to give it a mesh of pillar. And then let me open this back up so that way it refreshes. And we can go ahead and drag our sword into the scene as well. And we want to attach the trigger box to the actual long sword. And then we're going to go ahead and zero it on the sword. It should be defaulted to movable, but if it's not, make sure it is. Otherwise, the box will not move once you click play. I'm also going to change the scale in the X and Y to 0.1, so that way it fits the sword better. And I want this to be to where it's fitting the sword in terms of height. So we'll put it about there. 
And then we also want to make sure that we go to my character and attach our sword box and the details panel, otherwise it won't be able to determine when the slicing animation is playing. And we can go ahead and test and play. And as you can see, the sword's in my hand, just like in the previous video, and if I go over to the enemy and slash it, you can see up in the top left corner that the health is going down, and if I continue to slice it, it continues going down, and if I go and just bump it when I'm not slicing, it does no damage. And then if I get it down to zero, you can see it disappears into the scene, and I can no longer do more damage. So as a recap, we created a trigger box that we attach to our sword, so we could determine when the sword hits the enemy and deal damage. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We post two videos a week on YouTube on Wednesday and Saturday. We also stream games on Twitch Monday through Wednesday. On top of that, we released a asset pack on the Unity store of kid toy models, and we've released a phone app called Blast Off onto the Google store. If any of those things interest you or you would like to support us in any of those ways, all of the links for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.